hello 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 everyone and welcome back to my channel thank you so so much luck guys for the love that you've given me for the videos that i've uploaded so far um thank you so much i really 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 appreciate the support that you guys have shown me please don't don't mind the the background noise i've got a very feisty two-year-old who's not happy that it's cold today she's been fighting to go outside for the whole day today but it's really cold and it's youth day today and um i was just you know sitting and reminiscing on youth day and just enjoying the time with my family by the time this video is up i'm sure it will be another date but it's youth day today i hope you guys had a wonderful youth day and then you took this time to meditate on where we're coming from as south africa yeah and today you know today i feel so important <laughs> i feel so important today because the girl is wearing a mic you, you, I feel like I'm on News 24. I feel like I feel like I'm already on 1 million subscribers, you know, wearing a mic and all. I don't feel like a, a, a 100 subscriber new YouTuber, no. I feel like I'm on 100 subscribers. I'm wearing a mic like Nisreas. You never know which Nisreas. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I bought this mic at Take A Lot um, for only 400 rands. Um, so um what happens is I, I just it's connected to my phone uh because i'm recording with my phone yes believe it or not i'm recording all of these videos that you've seen so far in pictures it's all with my iphone 11 is it yeah it's the iphone 11 so i just connect this to my phone and voila the, i'm sure you guys could if you could hear like that the, the the sound is much more clearer you know it's not yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. So today, um, I want to talk about something that I've wanted to talk about for the longest time, and that is my journey with breastfeeding. Uh, please take note that I'm not a lactation consultant. So what I'll be talking about today is purely my experience with breastfeeding. I've breastfed uh, two, two babies so far. So yeah, I, both for a year. So I think I'm qualified enough to talk about this, right? And um, what made me, t uh, what actually inspired me to speak about this today is um, uh, an Instagram post that I saw from U Utekisi. She just gave birth re recently. Congratulations to her. She gave birth to another baby girl. So she was talking about the challenges of breastfeeding which took me um aback and um which actually made me also remember uh the challenges that i had with um with the first few months and then the first few days of breastfeeding you know <laughs> people uh, i don't know whether to i'm not i'm not blaming anyone but i'm just saying that people even you as a first-time mom you assume so many things when you're expecting your first uh, child um, from giving birth to the expectation of pregnancy to the expectation of what's going to happen in the delivery room you know what's going to happen when you breastfeed you know we all think that it's a it's a happily ever after an automatic automatic experience and then something that should just come natural and that is with 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 the whole pregnancy journey, it's something that everything, <laughs> everything is really not what you think it is. W when you come to realize actually that everything is not what it is, um, when you just um, experience your pregnancy and everything. And that um, and that's, that also adds up to the breastfeeding story that I'm gonna talk about today. So I assumed, um, I think mostly, most probably like, uh, most new moms i assume that breastfeeding breastfeeding is something that comes natural that as soon as the baby comes out and then your milk will be like okay the baby's out now then the milk will, will come out well some people are, bl are blessed enough like my uh, like a friend of mine she said that her, her her milk leaked the first when she was still pregnant her milk was already leaking so when the baby came she already had uh, the milk and then there were no problems but you know 
with me and with many other people and with many other friends who I've taken through the breastfeeding uh, the breastfeeding challenges and spoke to them and had a discussion with them and helped them for their milk to come out it didn't happen that way the milk didn't come out automatically and um, even while um, I was pregnant the milk there was just no sign of milk <laughs> the breasts just grew because I assumed that they're growing because I'm fat uh, and I'm also gaining weight and because of hormones but then there was no sign of milk so sharp um, then the baby then I give birth that's to my to my first daughter I give birth and then um, expecting the milk to come out but no, 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 no milk. <laughs> Lucky enough, um, I had a friend who gave birth, I think it was about nine months ago, and another friend who gave birth two weeks ago. So they took me, um, they gave me some tips on how I should make the milk come out. So what I did to help, not, not how to make the milk come out, but actually to stimulate the milk. Because actually, if you think about it, it makes sense like your body has never produced milk before so it won't know automatically that the baby has uh, has come out now it's time for the milk to also come out right so you can't assume that your body is going to know that it has to be stimulated so how i stimulated um the milk um for, for from coming out was that i used um what do you call this um, okay so I I didn't want to use any medication for the milk to come out because I just thought the the engorging of the breasts it was gonna be too exaggerated so I just wanted it to to stimulate like naturally you know so what I did was that okay I even though there was no milk coming out I did still put the baby uh, onto my breast and then to just help to for the baby to help the breast to realize that i'm here now it's time to make milk so the baby would suck 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 but i know that obviously it's a very 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 little that comes out at that point and um there was no dripping nothing it was just absolutely nothing coming out but still i would put the baby um I would put the baby there so that she could suck and then um, to help the milk, uh, to help to stimulate the milk. And then after I'd put the baby there, I would take a hot cloth and then I would sort of like massage my breast with that um, hot cloth, like sort of like, like this, put the hot, uh, hot cloth on top like that because I could feel that, okay, so there's something there, but they, it seems like they stuck somewhere. So I would put um, the cloth there and then I would massage my breast like this, massage the massage with a very hot cloth. And after that, I would have lots of tea, lots of water and lots of uh, uh, porridge, right? Because um, the more you take in liquids, the more uh, breast milk is stimulated for the breast for the milk to come out so i do that every time i'd put the baby there even though i know nothing is coming out then after that i'd put her down and then i'd put um the cloth so i did this and then the i i, I saw actual milk on day number three so tip number one if you're a new mom and you are here looking for tips <laughs> on how to breastfeed tip number one is patience especially if you're a new mom patience 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 if you see that okay obviously the baby is going to be hungry right i would advise that you cup feed the baby um with um with formula um but make sure that it's a cup feed because um the reason why i say it's a cup feed because you don't want the baby to get used to the um, how can I say the the bottle the bottle no I don't know what they call the bottle thingy I'll just call it the bottle nipple you don't want the baby to get used to the bottle nipple and the flow of how the milk comes out of the bottle because if the baby gets used to the fast flow of how the bottle uh, milk comes out then they won't understand because with breast milk the baby works kind of hard to kind of get the uh, the milk out because they suck and suck and then there's some point where it stops and then they need to continue to suck and at some and then at some uh, point it stops so with um, with the bottle obviously it's a continuous flow because it's a bottle it's not breast so make sure that you cup feed your baby make sure that if it's absolutely your desire first of all let me say that if it's absolutely your desire that you you want your baby to be breastfed 
a hundred percent with you if you don't want to mix feed then make sure that they get used to the cup even if even if it's a syringe like take the syringe out um, then take the milk with the syringe and then put some few droplets on the baby's uh, lips or the baby's mouth until they fall and newborns don't they generally honestly they don't need a lot of milk so just a little little but but after that you know take them back to the um, take them back to latch and also they also need to get used to the latching you know because it be like even even babies it doesn't come natural that they're just gonna look at your breast and think oh food and then they're gonna start sucking away no you need to to help them to latch some babies need time for them to latch and stuff so yeah it's a process so i hope i've painted uh an in um um a picture that to show you that guys that it's not something that comes natural there's a lot of challenges with breastfeeding it's very it's an it's an emotionally taxing um process you know even though it's meant to be natural but it's very emotionally taxing you've given birth you are still in pain and then you know you there's milk that needs to come out there's a baby that needs to be fed sometimes you're nervous sometimes you're scared you know your hormones are all over the place and then here now you also need to deal with breastfeeding stress so it needs a lot of support you know you know you need a lot of people around you to support you to let you vent to to you know for them to let you for them to understand really what you're going through you know you don't need people to say well you know you actually don't need people who are just going to say stupid things around you you just need support and support support because like i i don't know what the story with breastfeeding is actually but it's really 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 not easy especially the first few days of your child's life on earth if you've if you decided that it's too much for you and you know you can't do it then i think it's okay to just opt for um um a bottle um what do you call this formula because like all you want is a fed baby all we want is just a baby who's fed a mommy and a baby who's happy so if you see that you can't deal with breastfeeding stress because it it's it's really a lot you know when i saw degas's post where she just you know highlighted the challenges that she's facing it really took me back to my experience so that's with my first baby and so the milk came out day number three and i thought ah, i'm all good and then after that my breasts started um, cracking now when breastfeed when breasts start cracking like they literally it's like they tearing like your nipples it literally looks like they are tearing like they, they look like they've they've been cut by a razor and the reason for that number one is that you've had breasts all your life right nobody was sucking on them and then all of a sudden there's a new person who needs to suck on these breasts every hour sometimes every 15 minutes because breast because breastfed babies like they drink a lot of milk because the first few days of breastfeeding is just like water mixed with milk so obviously uh the the the, the body absorbs observes the water quickly in their bodies and so they need to be fed frequently sometimes it's every 15 minutes sometimes it's every uh, uh, 20 minutes sometimes it's an hour sometimes it's two hours and then all of a sudden you there's just a lot of buzz happening in your breasts so obviously there's going to be so some sort of reaction so now the breasts are cracking and another thing that will that make the breast to crack is um uh an incorrect latch um if if you're gonna breastfeed um i would really suggest that you get a lactation consultant um don't you don't really have to go through the pain of cracked nipples and feeling pain and um i used to google a lot to a point where my mom said you have to be google <laughs> she used to call on tanabam i want to be google because i used to google everything used to watch youtube videos and stuff but if you're a new mom and you can then get yourself a lactation consultant who will teach you the correct latch because you would assume that nurses in hospitals know um they would, they're gonna help you with this but you know nurses they <laughs> they help thousands of moms a day 
and um, unfortunately you're not special to them your case of not having milk is not special to them if you say that if you say that milk is not coming up they're going to give you a baby formula you know and if let's say you don't want your baby to drink formula but they're going to do that because our nurses are not trained i actually think it's um i actually think it's um it, it should be like it should be compulsory to have lactation consultants in hospitals in government hospitals and private hospitals because you know sometimes moms can easily give up on breastfeeding because they think that they don't have milk or it's painful or like i say that breastfeeding is is, is something that should be natural but it's not natural it's hard 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 work it's emotionally taxing so some other moms um i don't want to say give up I don't know what's a, um, a lack of a better word, but I'm just going to say give up, but I don't really mean give up. But yeah, they kind of like leave it, but it was not necessary. All they needed was that push and that um, extra help and support for them to get it right. So if I was the president, you know, I would have lactation consultants in hospitals, in government hospitals, in private hospitals, helping new mums and not even new mums, helping all mums and showing them how breastfeeding is done. Because it's really, really not what breastfeeding is not what you think it is. Um, yeah, uh, where was I? Yeah, get a, a lactation consultant, um, get them online. Yeah, so that you can get the support. Oh yeah, get a lactation consultant so that you don't have to go through the pain and the frustrations of help, um, having cracked nipples because of incorrect latch. So a correct latch is so, so important. So I didn't know that, that you had to get a correct latch. And literally, literally when I say this, with my first child, when the first three, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm even getting kind of emotional talking about this because it was so traumatizing. It was so, so, so traumatizing and it was so painful. Yo, so, um, so I would literally, I would literally be okay when she's sleeping because please guys excuse the noise. My children are very, very busy out there. So please just ignore them. Um, they with my helper, so don't don't say that I'm a YouTube mom focused on YouTube and not looking after but Nyanas not looking after her and accusing me of, a be, of being a bad mom. No, I'm not a bad mom. I'm helping other moms actually. <laughs> so uh, with me, yeah, when I get my where was I? Okay, so with me, um, I literally when my daughter when I would hear my daughter get up and I'd like oh, she's up now she needs to breastfeed I would. I would literally run around the house like, oh my God, it's time to face the pain of those first two seconds of her sucking on me. Yo. Little did I know that I did not get the latch correct. So then cool, I got, uh, um, I got over the pain. Um, I think I just got used to it. I don't know. Or I, I, I was lucky enough to get the latch correct because I, I i still didn't know about the latch um but yeah i got it right you know but i didn't have to go through this if i had a lactation consultant or if i had somebody uh if i had a professional next to me to help me with um the breastfeeding but fine then i did get um then i did get it correct and then breastfed successfully for a year obviously after six months that's when we um, introduced solids and then came my second baby Masiko, the one who's currently screaming <laughs> you know i i call her mariah uh, mariah carey or beyonce because you like she can scream from the moment she, she 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 was born she was screaming until today 24 months later she's still screaming but that's a, a topic for another day came baby number two now i'm thinking i i got this hi boo in experience you know i breastfed for a year not knowing that okay knowing that actually babies um are different so um i didn't so i didn't really take um I didn't take it serious again because <laughs> I thought, okay, with Neo, it was painful for the first three days 
um, the cracked nipples and stuff. No, it's fine. So actually this time I made sure that I bought um, um, I bought what is it nipple creams and stuff and everything that I need. I asked for uh, the doctor to give me some like good. I make sure that I get up um, the best the the best way I knew how. But what I didn't know about um, my second child is that she had a semi tongue tie. So a tongue tie is this thing here. Uh, 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 that thing over there. So hers is slightly. So hers is not like really at the like bare at the back like other people. So it's slightly. So slightly forward, right? It's just slightly slight this thing here. Slightly just forward. And that means that she can't open her mouth wide enough, right? For for the nipple to 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 to, to come into her mouth. And guys, when I say the nipple, I'm not just talking about this thing. This only that round little thing that comes out when it's cold. <laughs> comes out when you're breastfeeding. No. Now I'm talking about the I think they call it the areola. I'll I'll write the collect the, the correct um the correct word for it um down on the description box or just down on the video. The whole that whole black thing needs to be in her mouth, not just the the nipple the nipple the round part of the nipple it's the areola thing as well the whole black thing it needs to be in her mouth so the child needs to open her mouth wide enough for them to um to be able to breastfeed successfully to be able to get um to able to latch correctly and for you to also uh, not experience the cracks and the cuts and so on so with my baby she had that slight tongue tie so she couldn't open her mouth um, correctly oh. my nipples cracked enough cracked so bad because I didn't know that this thing was also a factor I didn't know so my nipples cracked so bad that they started bleeding I started bleeding <laughs> if, if my husband was here to say I would literally cry when it was time for breastfeeding like literally i would just want to cry and i don't know what is it with my nipples in winter but but i think it's generally my skin in winter you know skin is generally sensitive in winter so it was that my my child was born in may so obviously that's winter so it was that my skin is sensitive my child had a tongue, a, a semi-tongue tie, which means that she couldn't open her mouth wide enough, and I didn't know that. And now my my, my breast had cracked to the point of bleeding. So I saw that actually in hospital that the colostrum. So the colostrum is the sticky, the sticky milk that comes out in the beginning. Okay, so the second time around, I didn't really have trouble with milk coming out at all. It's like my breast knew what to do. Okay, I got distracted there for a moment. I don't know where it was I um, but I think I was talking about the semi what was I saying? Where was I? Um Okay, yes, I was saying that my nipples cracked to the point that they started bleeding. Ooh. Then I knew from there that I actually needed help. So I called um a lactation consultant who comes um she does uh um home visits so she came to my home and then i showed her um like my, my my nipples are cracking oh yeah i was saying that i saw the the the, the blood from my breast coming out of the hospital from the from the moment that the colostrum was coming out right so the colostrum was and i thought i know after three days i know i'll be fine so i continued with um my breast uh, my nipple cream i'm gonna um, i'm gonna show the nipple creams um as the video goes by i just forgot their names but i'll show the nipple cream that was actually a great help to me but also i think sitting in the sun also helped him um sitting in the sun and making sure that my nipples are exposed now that also helped me to heal um helped with the process of healing and stuff so i called a nipple consult nipple consultant <laughs> a lactation consultant who came to my house and then after that she showed me that oh dear actually your t your, your, your child has a semi tongue tie and uh, you're not doing the latch correctly 
so she showed me how to do the latch cor- correctly and then when days uh, when when then it got um and then it got much 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 better so i didn't need to go through all of the stress if i from the beginning just went for a lactation consultant to show me how things are done but um i don't know we just as people we just assume that it's going to happen naturally as as i said in the beginning but it's something that's it's something that actually there's a technique in this thing and um it's something the technique the technique technique needs to be mastered and then only your life will be um and then only your life will be easy from there so it took a it took a while for me to actually heal with my second one but uh you know i just i i really 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 held on like it was it was a really 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 um horrible experience for me and what um you know <laughs> you know it's so funny when you have a child it doesn't matter even if you even if they told you to, to like cut your toe off so that your baby can so that you can benefit your baby somehow you're gonna do it so at that time i did not even consider myself i was like this my i was just focused on my baby having a great start to her um, um to her health journey and that was it she, I was just focused on her having a good start to a health journey and that is through breast um, breast milk because we know that there are the um, benefits of breastfeeding outweighs those of um, those of a formula and please don't get me wrong now don't come from me I'm not bashing or saying anything bad about um, formula mummies no because I really understand the frustrations of breastfeeding and the stress that comes with breastfeeding. It's just that with me, I had an end goal in mind. I was focused on something, and then I, I knew that since it was winter, I was not up. I was not about to get up at night and fix my baby uh, bottle and, um, you know, have that whole thing of sleeping with a flask and. No, I just wanted to be under covers when the baby wake up. I don't even wake up. I just take out the breast and then they go. She feeds herself. So I was just focused on the end product. And then I knew that the pain wasn't going to last forever. So, yeah, that's what happened. Um, it took it took actually quite a while for for me to get the breastfeeding right the second time around. Actually surprising enough but um, I actually did I ended up breastfeeding a year um, as well a year and a month actually oh my second baby she absolutely enjoyed breastfeeding so I breastfed her for um, for a year and a month so 13 months so um, I actually wanted to have a door here so that I can uh, demonstrate um, getting a latch and stuff let me let me go get that Okay, so what I have here is one of my uh, <laughs> one of my daughter's dolls. I'm just gonna show you um, how to get the latch right and how um, how the correct latch is done. Actually, I just don't have a nipple to show you. I can't show you my nipple. I can't show you, and I don't think my husband would be happy about that. <laughs> okay, so um, let me just come a little bit closer so that you can see. Okay, so this is this is the baby, right? Pretend it's a baby. Okay, so what happens um, in order for, for you to get the baby's mouth to open wide enough is that you're going to put, like, pretend this is now a nipple, right? So you're going to put your nipple here on the baby's, on top of the baby's nose and just do that, stroke it like that. And then while you stroke it like that, you're gonna see the babies. If the baby, this is actually a way to also test if the baby's hungry or not. So you're gonna put your nipple over here, all right, and just do that, that, and that. So if the baby's hungry and, and if the baby is ready for a feed, then the baby's gonna open his mouth like, like if, when you do this, it's gonna go like, right? And then as soon as you think that the mouth the mouth is open wide enough then you just transition like and then put the nipple in and then not the nipple in the whole brace even the black part of the best i think it's the areola you put that in so i'm just going to repeat it so you're going to do that right 
And then if they don't open their mouth, then then means they're not really interested in feeding. And the reason also why you put it here is that they can smell the breast, the, the, the milk. So then they know, well, it's time to, you know, my favorite meal is here. So when you put it here, then obviously they're going to open their mouth and then you just transition like that, right? And then it goes straight into their mouth and then they would have opened their mouths wide enough. Like Allah, you know, with, with my siho, uh, with my siho, when I told you that with the, with her, it was really bad. Um, I would even wait for her to yawn when she would yawn. I'm like, ah, <laughs> go and then you and I'm like, Choops. and then, um, and then, I, and then obviously when she yawns, her mouth is like, she opens her mouth wide. So then obviously the whole breast with the areola, it will go in. So the lactation consultant helped me a thousand fold. So when she was, uh, she, when she was showing me how to, um, how to do this, she, she actually said that I must use that very breast that is painful. I wanted to cry. So what is wrong with this woman? She said, no, we're going to demonstrate with the, with the breast that is cracked the most. So that breast that is cracked the most, open it up, la vie, then we're going to use it. And then so I opened it and uh, then, but then it was a good thing because then that was to test on whether the latch was good enough or not. And then after that, you know, when we, when she, when she showed me the whole uh, nose to nipple demonstration, then, um, then immediately my sikha would open her mouth wide enough and then I would just slot. And then it actually worked, eh? Hey? So that's how I learned um, how to latch. And then I'm going to repeat what I said, you know, you don't, don't have to go through the pain of having cracked nipples and all of that. Get yourself a lactation consultant. And you know, with us black people, we think, you know, this is a white people thing. This is a I mean, you know, <laughs> with black people, we think, you know, we, we, we think we're strong enough for everything and you don't really need to be strong enough for anything. If there's help available for that, just go ahead and get yourself some help, girl, so that you can just avoid the complications um, that you might be putting yourself through and the pain. It's really not worth it. That is uh, it from me today. Um, I hope I've, I've, I've spoken about everything that I wanted to speak of. And um, lastly, I just want to say that, you know, I don't know why as um, a new moms we put ourselves under so much pressure. Um, I remember a friend of mine, um, her son actually didn't, so she had milk, she had no problems and everything. Her son was the one who was not interested. He just wanted, he just wanted his things to happen now. So um, her son was the one who chose formula for himself. So it also happens that the kid, because they also have their own journeys here on earth and he or she would choose that their journey here on earth would include them starting with formula. So they would not be interested in breast. So she felt, she felt so, so bad. You know, she felt she, she beat herself up, you know, I think it's got to do with hormones, um, 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 also because like you just all over the freaking place when you just given birth so and then um, she had to stop but I'm glad she I'm glad she just got over it so quickly and then she was just happy and um, everything was good so if it, it will if it really makes you happy if it really like uh, decreases the stress for you I would say you know it's fine you can also go um, for formula but if you really want to uh, hang in there like I did for, for two years combined with the two babies, then, um, then breastfeeding is the way to go. Because I, because I also think that breastfeeding is like, I'm, I'm saying all of this now that I was in so much pain and it was so traumatizing and then it's so much stress. But as soon as you get it, like I'm telling you, you can breastfeed your, your, your kids um, while driving. I used to breastfeed while cooking. I'd be cooking a meal and I'd be breastfeeding. I would be, um, oh, with my sikho also, I remember I had to write an exam. So, so I was studying while I was breastfeeding. As soon as you get over 
those difficult few days or few weeks then you're just good to go for a good 12 months so um i would also advise you to not give up too quickly um rather reach out to people you can reach out to me i'm more than happy to support you um because i know how frustrating and like uh, breastfeeding is, is you can just reach out to people for help and like i said get yourself a lactation consultant you don't really have to give up you know um it's not you your case is not unique you know you're not the only one who had who has or is having or will have difficulty with breastfeeding majority of first-time moms actually experience the difficulty as well so you don't really have to give up just reach out get help but if you feel that you can't do it then that's okay we can't do it we the, fed baby is best that's all we want we want a fed baby um that's it for me for today um don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to like um if you're here for the first time and you got your help just might as well subscribe and i promise you i'll make many more videos um where you will receive help and advice and i hope you've um you've taken um You've just taken a few lessons from what i was speaking about i hope i didn't traumatize anyone but you know i just thought let me speak about it you know because like we don't really talk about it and it's there the fact it's there people are experiencing it um it's happening so yeah um give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and if you are a regular here thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for the support i see you thank you guys and um yeah god bless you